couldn't have picked a better one myself. It's top of the line. All the options. The only thing it can't do is fly. No, I'm just licking. This one is way out of my price range. Oh, see, now there's your problem. Price range is really just a frame of mind. The facts are that you work hard. You deserve this. And God wants you to be happy. Yeah, appreciate your enthusiasm, but um, God never said that. Every one of you at church today, excited to start this brand new series, God Never Said That. In this series, we're, we're going to uh, tackle four different cultural belief systems that people have for years attributed to God, but the reality is God never said it, and God never said that. So uh, this week uh, we'll be tackling something, but uh, next week is very, very important. You don't want to miss next week. Uh, it is God will never give you more than you can handle. God never said that. Uh, also, the, the next week we'll uh, tackle a cultural lie. Uh, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you don't hurt anybody. God never said that. And then uh, week four, probably the most important one uh, is it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. God never said that. He didn't say anything like it. Uh, so definitely don't miss any of this series. It is uh, imperative. Uh, you're going to love it. So, uh, But this week, the most important uh, and, and the most popular misbelief about God uh, in West, Western, our version of Western Christianity, God wants you happy. Above all else, above everything that God has for you and everything that God is, is looking out for you and everything, God wants you happy. And, you know, we always believe this. And I would love to tell you this. I would love to tell you that above all else, God wants you happy. And His soul purpose is to make sure that you are happy. You know, I could even quote scripture convincing you of this, like, like Psalm 97 and 12. May all who are godly be, let's all say it together, be happy. You know, that verse just makes me want to dance. It really does. It makes me want to dance. You know, just, I mean... Come on. You know, I can... I know. All right, all right, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. We're done, we're, we're done, we're done, we're done, we're done. All right, all right. I just want to make sure that you're happy, you know, in church. I'm sure that my wife is not. <laughs> She's like, stop it, I did not marry you for your dancing. Uh, but I'll tell you what, just making sure that you're awake in church, and that verse just absolutely makes me happy. See, cultural mistakes uh, tell you that, that above all else, God wants you happy. And, and if you believe this, you will, you, will, um, you will fall into what I call the theology of happiness. The theology of happiness, if you'll go to the next slide. Um, which is, whatever makes me happy must be right. And whatever makes me unhappy must be wrong, right? It, Cheryl Crow one time sang, if it makes you happy, it can't be that bad, right? It, it, people believe that it, if, if it makes me happy, it must be right. If it makes me unhappy, it must be wrong. Making me happy is cake. It must be great, right? It rhymes. Cake is great, it must be great. It, it, it makes me happy. It must be right. Broccoli doesn't make me happy. It actually stinks when it cooks. And, you know, uh, well, I'm actually trying to think of a vegetable. I'd, beets. Who likes beets? Nobody likes beets. Who's the weirdo in the room that likes beets? There's nothing. Okay, there's not one. Yay. Okay. So you like beets, don't you? No? Okay, good. All right. So, uh, the, the beets, 
they're gross. Like, I'm pretty sure that God was like, oh, God tasted it and was like, oh, that won't do. No. And he just like packed it into the dirt, you know, and he was like, they'll never find it. Right? And then people found it and put it in salad. Number two, discomfort, delay, risk, suffering, inconveniences, and obstacles can't be God's will. It absolutely cannot be God's will. If I, if I experience any discomfort, if I uh, experience any delay or risk or suffering or inconvenience in any port, point or obstacles at any point, it cannot be God's will for my life. Because God wouldn't do that, right? If something isn't right, it's not God. See, these are, these are the, the theology of happiness. God always wants me happy. If you, if you believe that God always wants you happy, you're probably going to fall into these beliefs. And number three, without knowing it, you'll begin to worship the false gods of comfort, money, pleasure, and things. If you believe that God wants you happy, if you believe that above all else, God's sole purpose is to make you happy, sometimes we will get into this belief that God exists to serve us. That God exists to serve us in some way, shape, or form. God exists to serve us. And then what we do is we pretty much just reduce God into a cosmic Coke machine. We put in our money, we say our prayers, and we pretty much just reduce him to a cosmic Coke machine. If I go up to a Coke machine and I put in my money, it is contractually obligated. I have done what it asked me to do. I have given it $1.50 or how much, however much it is now. It's like five bucks now. But anyway, you put in your money, you press the button, it now has to give me my thing. It now has to give me my Coke. And sometimes we treat God like that. We've reduced God to some sort of formula. I said my prayers. I went to church. I tried to do good. I gave an offering. I didn't cuss my boss out. I didn't put that comment on, on Instagram. I should be blessed. My headache should go away. I should get the job. The girl should go out with me. I should get the dream house. I should, you know, do this. I should do that. I should not get a zit. You know, everything should happen because I did what I was supposed to do. I... Uh, prayed, I gave an offering, I went to church, I gave my money, I put my money in, I should get my blessing. But see, the tragedy of this is the fact that, that people believe this and they believe that God wants them happy and if they're not, if they're not happy, that means that God failed. But see, here's the thing, God doesn't exist to serve us, we exist to serve God. And so God didn't fail. They, they even try things like, I tried religion, I tried church, and it just didn't work. It just didn't work. Now, you're sitting there going, wow, this is going to be a depressing sermon. This is ridiculous. Why did I come to church today? I could have, I could have just stayed, stayed in bed. After depressing you and saying that God doesn't want you happy, I want you to know that your happiness is not the highest priority to God. God delights in your happiness, He's happy for you when you're happy. It brings him joy, just as a parent is delighted when their child is happy. When my child, it, when, when Isaiah is, is happy and, and laughs at me and smiles at me, it warms my heart, right? Because I'm happy that he's happy, right? I'm happy that he's happy when he's smiling and he's pulling on Kirsty's hair and taking off her glasses and everything. It's hilarious. I love it. It's, I'm happy. But when, exactly, but when I put him down for a nap, he cries. Why? Because that doesn't make him happy. But his happiness is not my top priority. I'm happy when he's happy, but my, his safety and his health are my top priority. So when I lay him down for a nap, he's going to cry. Now, if I didn't care about him and I only cared about his health, if I only cared about his happiness, I would never put him down for a nap because I would want to play with him and, and I'd never want him to cry. But I care more about his health and his happiness than I do uh, his health and his, his, um, his safety than I do about his happiness. So I do put him down for a nap. 
For example, my nephew scored, uh, made a touchdown, and they won the championship. He plays flag football, right? He scored a touchdown, they won the championship, and his parents were delighted for him. They, I mean, they cheered, it was, yeah, right? Now, if he would have, during his victory dance, flipped the other team off, all of a sudden, they wouldn't have been happy. If he would have been like, ha, you know, and flipped the other team off, they wouldn't have been happy with him. All of a sudden, his happiness wouldn't have been their top priority. See, God doesn't want you to pursue happiness. He wants you to pursue Him. God doesn't want you to pursue happiness. He wants you to pursue Him. But we're not, we don't pursue Him for what He can give us. We pursue Him for who He is. I think so many times we'll pursue God because, of, because we want something. We'll pursue God because we want this or that. We'll, we want, well, I want this blessing. I want this. I want that. You know, I want my kids to still call. Uh, I want my kids to call me. I want my, I want my uh, uh, job to not fire me. I want this. You know, I'm going through this. My, my dad is, is uh, his health is bad. You know, I'm going to pursue God because of all this, right? But we shouldn't pursue God for what He can give us. We should pursue God because of who He is. So I want to tell you two reasons God does not want you happy. Number one, God doesn't want you happy when it causes you to do something wrong or unwise. Wrong or unwise. You can also say sinful or stupid. Sinful or stupid. I remember back when I was a kid, I, uh, I, I was in the backyard... Uh, playing with uh, my dogs. I had two dogs. Uh, they were both labs. Uh, no, yeah, they were both labs, and one of them was black and one of them was yellow. And uh, I had the idea that um, they needed to be baptized. <clears throat> I knew they were saved, um, but they needed to be baptized. So, uh, so yeah, I, uh, I filled up a cooler um, with water <clears throat> at the hose pipe, and I mean, it was one of them big coolers, right? This was a feat for, for a little kid. I was, I was pretty happy about myself. Anyway, so a little a big, big cooler, you know, filled it up with water, and I drug it all the way. And so they were, they were in the backyard, and one was by this tree, and one was by this tree. So I, and they were chained up, so, you know, they were easy targets. And so I pulled that next to the tree, and I was like, you're going to get baptized. And so the yellow one was first. And so I would, uh, it would, I know it would make me happy if my dogs were baptized. Um, it would not make my parents happy. And it would probably not make the dogs happy either. But I remember trying to baptize them and I would be like, you want a drink of water? Come here. And I would try to get them to come get some water. And then when they would get water, I would go like that and push them into the thing. I don't know how I didn't get bit, honestly. And so I was like, but that wasn't enough. We can't just dunk the head. They need full immersion, okay? Even at five years old, I believed in full immersion, all right? We can't just sprinkle these doggies. They won't go to heaven like that. They got to be fully dunked. So, um, after I got their head baptized, I was like, well, how am I going to get them in there? I couldn't pick them up or anything like that. So I just figured, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get them to lay down, and I'm just going to dump the cooler over them, right? Well, they, uh, they didn't uh, want to do that. Um, and this is really the perfect example, and here's why. It would make me happy if my dogs were baptized, it would make my parents happy if I didn't get bit and if I didn't torture the dogs. And the dogs would probably be drowned by the time I actually baptized them. So it would make me happy, but my parents were not happy, and they didn't want me to hap uh, do this because it was stupid. It was stupid to baptize. Just to let you know, don't baptize your dogs. Don't baptize them dogs, all right? They don't need it. It's going to be okay. Give them baths, but don't baptize them, okay? <laughs> it was stupid. It was stupid. And my parents looked out the back, <laughs> looked out the window and was like, oh, that's nice. He's giving them a drink. Oh, what did he just do? <laughs> come, come screaming out, stop it! 
He was stupid. <laughs> but 1 Peter 1 and 16, it says, Be happy, for I am happy. Is that what it says? No. It says, Be holy, for I am holy. 1 Peter 1 and 16, Be holy, for I am holy. But yet, when we believe that God wants us happy above all else, we'll start doing things wrong or unwise in the pursuit of happiness. And we will just justify it in some way or another. Since I'm not happy, I'm allowed to do something that would otherwise be wrong. Think about eating cake. I didn't say eat a piece of cake. I said eating cake, the whole thing. It would make me happy. It would make me happy if I ate the whole thing of cake, right? Now, that's not really my bag. My thing is ice cream. It would make me happy if I could eat the whole tub of ice cream. Like a teenage girl that just got broke up with, I would love to eat the whole tub of ice cream, okay? It would be awesome. Sit there in my snuggy blank, uh, blanket and eat the whole thing of ice cream. But that's stupid. It, it, it's, it's not wise. It's, it's not wise. What about quitting your job without having another job? You've got maybe three kids under four at home. You shouldn't quit your job before you have another job because that would be stupid. That would be unwise to do that. What if, uh, like, what if your, your wife is not meeting your needs? You're, so you're like, well, I'm just going to look up this stuff on the internet because, you know, I'm a man and I have needs and I'm just going to look up this stuff or, or my, my husband is not, is not meeting my needs. So I'm just going to look, look up this stuff, you know, on the internet because my husband is just not meeting my needs and I'm a woman and I need needs. I'm a man. I, need, I have needs or whatever. What about premarital sex? You know, I'm in, we're in love. And by the way, we're married in our hearts and God will understand because we're so in love. We're going to get married one day anyway. No, no. What about a show that dishonors God? We start, we start to just justify things that are, that are unwise or, uh, or not right, right? We start justifying things. Well, they didn't, they didn't say GD that many times in the, in the show. And by the way, it's funny it's funny. It's so funny. And they, they didn't say GD, but like once, you know, and I mean, I don't say that word, but they can say that word and I can watch it and it will be all right. You know, well, let me just tell you, garbage in, garbage out. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so you start putting that thing, you start putting that stuff inside your body, then what do you think you're going to get out? They didn't say the F word, but like 23 times in the movie. It's fine, and I don't say it. We just start watching garbage, but we, we always, always, and, and it's funny. It's funny, and, and so it, it, must be, it's, it must be okay. God, I think you would be all right, you know. I, I think it would be okay if I did this. And we just justify it, but we worship at the altar of happiness too many times too much. Number two, God doesn't want you happy when it is only based on things of this world. When it's only based on things of this world. Have you ever watched advertising late at night, like the infomercials? Anyone ever watched infomercials like you can't sleep, so you watch infomercials? Well, <clears throat> I've learned through infomercials that I need three things in my life. Three things because of advertising. Number one, I need a knife that can cut through a muffler. I don't know why I need it, but I need it. I need a knife that can cut through a muffler. I need tape that can put my boat back together if I cut it in half. I'd, listen, I called that place. I did. I called them. I said... My boat done got tore in half, and I need some tape. They hung up on me. I just wonder if it works, you know? Anyway, and number three, I need the miracle lotion that will make me look younger because I want to look my best for my wife, and so I just want that miracle lotion to put on my face, and all of a sudden, I'm 20 again. I need that miracle pill that that will make me lose 50 pounds 
in 50 hours. When I was younger, I wanted a singing fish. Did you ever see those that were mounted on the thing? You know, they were the creepiest things ever. They were the creepiest things ever. Because like they would be, you got one, didn't you? Uh, of course you did. I tell you what, they're the creepiest things ever. You've got one. I've I've seen it. I've seen it. But it, you know, they're they're on a plaque, you know, and then all of a sudden you press the button and they look at you like that. <laughs> you know, and they just like look at you and start singing, everything going to be all right and the little tail wags and everything. I tell you what, it's the creepiest thing ever. And then I figured out that you can put it on motion sensor. You can, it has a motion sensor on it. So when someone walks by, so when someone walks by thinking, I'm just, you showed a picture of it, didn't you? And, and so when someone walks by, you're, you're sitting there and you're just thinking, oh, what a great fish. And you're like, you're, you're like looking at it. And you're like, oh, what a good fish. You know, and it starts everything's going to be like that, you know, and you start, ah, you know, it's crazy. But I needed one when I was younger. I needed it. I told my, I begged my dad for hours, please get me that singing fish. He finally called some fake number and acted like he was ordering one. And it shut me up. He said, it will be here in four to six weeks. In four to six weeks, I was, I was on to something else. I needed that singing fish. You know, it's amazing what we need. It's amazing what we think will make us happy. The formula for, for happiness that culture tells us is this. Better possessions, newer, faster things. Better possessions, newer uh, iPhone, a, a new this, a new that. Uh, peaceful circumstances. It's everything is peaceful in my life. No, no conflict or anything. My kids are getting along. My, my wife actually loves me and tells me that. You know, my, my, everything is going good in my life. My, my, my family is not fighting. My in-laws are not, are not getting on my nerves. If I have peaceful situations, circumstances... It's okay. So if I've got better possessions plus peaceful circumstances plus thrilling experiences like a new vacation, if I just go on vacation, everything will be all right. If I just go on this, everything will be all right. If I can just get away to the beach for two days, everything will be all right. Well, you know what? You're going to take your problems to the beach. The beach won't solve everything, but we should probably try. Amen? Okay. Uh, the right relationships. If I, if, I, if, I get, if I trade you in for a newer model... You know, if I trade, if I trade my, my uh, boyfriend or girlfriend in uh, for someone newer or, or for someone younger or whatever, I will be all right. The perfect appearance, nip it, tuck it, lift it, suck it, all kinds of stuff. If, if all this stuff, you know, if, if all this stuff happens, that means that I have happiness. What, nip it, tuck it, suck it, really? Well, I mean, it's true. Nip it, tuck it, lift it. You know, I mean, it's, I don't get it, you know. Take off four of my chins. I mean, whatever. I'll be happy. I, I, you know, maybe someone is watching this on the internet. If you know of somewhere to donate fat, I'd like to be a volunteer. Because I'd like to donate some fat to anybody in need. Amen. Hallelujah. Do I have any more signing up? Yeah. Okay. So if you have all that, you'll be happy. If I have better possessions, if I have peaceful circumstances, if I have thrilling experiences and the right relationships and the perfect appearance, if I just have money, if I have a ton of money, I will be happy. But see, that, all that is based on happenings. And happenings change. Happiness in this way is based on happenings, and happenings change. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Do not love the world or, any, or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Ouch. Ow. I'm afraid to go on because 
I'm af- when I read this, I was like, oh, well, I'm afraid to go to the next verse because <laughs> that one hurts. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. God does not want you happy when it's stupid or unwise. God does not want you happy when it's based on only the things of the world. Above all else, God's highest calling for you is not your happiness, but here's why. God doesn't want you happy as much as God wants you blessed. And you're saying, well, isn't that the same thing? No, he has something far better than your happiness. Happiness is based on happenings. A blessed life that he wants you to live is based on his goodness and his presence. Blessed, the Greek, the, the Greek word is makarios, and it means supremely blessed, more than happy, more than happy. It's another level. You're not just happy. It doesn't mean that you'll never get sick, never lose a job, never get a zit before prom, uh, never always go your way. God always says yes to every single prayer. You'll get the dream house, the dream girl, the dream job, everything. It does not mean that. What it does mean is that you will experience the goodness of God even in the middle of some of the toughest times in your life. Your happiness and your blessings are not based on the perfect pain-free life. God never promised that. Actually, if you want to promise, Jesus said, in this world, you will have problems. You will have trouble. Jesus promised that. How's that for a promise? Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But then he goes on to say, take heart, for I have overcome the world. It doesn't mean that you will never have pain or a storm in your life or weakness or, or a trial, but it does mean that you will find comfort in the pain. You will find strength in the storm. You will find strength in the weakness. You will find joy in trials. You can rejoice in trials. I would never choose them. I would never choose them. I, w- I would never ask for God for my trials because I would never ask for them on my best day. On my best day, I would never seek God like I did in my trial. Does that make sense? In my best day, I never seek God the way I do in my trial. But I found His goodness in my worst day. Psalm 37 and 4, delight yourself also in the Lord and He shall give you the desires of your heart. As we pursue God, His desires become our desires. Not my will, God, but your will. Living the blessed life is something better than happiness. It's a supernatural life. You walk around a little bit differently because it's a supernatural life. It's His super meeting your natural and you mesh and all of a sudden your desires become become based on what He wants you to do, based on what He wants you to do. It's, a, it's His power and His presence that carry us. Let me break this down very simply for you. If I took a fish out of the ocean and put him on the beach, would he be happy? This is not a rhetorical question. If I took a fish on the beach and put him on the, uh, uh, fish out of the ocean and put him on the beach, would he be happy? Okay, what if I put $100,000 in his little fin? Would he be happy then? No. What if I give him a beach chair and sunglasses? No. Okay, what if I give him a martini and a Playfish magazine? You know, him looking at that. Some of you are hesitating. You know, him looking at that. Mm, look at that tail on that one. Are those fins real? or fa- Anyway... Now, <clears throat> would he be happy? Would he be happy? No, 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 no. He would not be happy. Why? Because he would not be, ever be happy on the beach because he wasn't designed for the beach. Here's the thing. You weren't made for earth. You were created for heaven. So moments of happiness and joy cannot compare to what's ahead. Lower your expectation of earth. Lower your expectation of earth. 
Stop expecting happiness from the earth and start expecting happiness from the Father who gives a blessed life. No new car, no new wife, new baby, new boat will give you the joy that your heart craves. You have a Christ-shaped void in your life. That is what's going on. You may have tried to fill it with parties and boyfriends and girlfriends and drugs and sex and moving places and move churches and nothing fulfills. Why? Because you were not created to be satisfied by this world. You were not created to be satisfied by the things of this world. You were created to, for heaven. You were created for God. You were created to worship. And it's all a counterfeit compared to the joy and the, the, the reward of heaven. There's so much more. So you just have to tell God, I give you everything. I will give you everything that you have. Everything that I am is yours. My mouth, use it how you want it. My feet, take me where you want me to go. My hands, I will use them to work for you. My talents, I will do it for you. My gifts, thank you for giving me them. I will do it for you. My possessions, they're all yours. My money, you can have it. It's all yours. Suddenly you're delighting yourself in the Lord and your desires are His desires. You're living the blessed life. It's not perfect. It's not pain-free, but it's blessed. At the beginning of the message, I told you 9712, Psalm 9712, may all who, who are godly be happy. And I didn't give you the rest of the verse intentionally. Because it says, may all who are godly be happy in the Lord and praise His holy name. Happiness will never be found in happiness. Happiness will only be found in God. And what's deeper is the blessings of joy, peace, power, and purpose. Lower your expectation of earth. You were not created for here. You were created for heaven. Above all else, God doesn't want you happy when it comes to you doing something sinful or unwise. God doesn't want you happy when it's based on the things of this world. God has something far better for you, and God wants you blessed. No matter what and in everything, we know in Romans 8.28 that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose, that you can say, God, I am yours. You are not a formula that I have to figure out. You are not something that, that I put my money in, I put my prayers in, and out pops what I want. But you are something great. And only you can fulfill me. Happiness is based on circumstances and is based on things that are temporary. But God wants me blessed. God wants you blessed and to live a blessed life. Does it mean that ha uh, things won't come your way? That that you won't have a bad day? That that you know the 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 person won't flip you off in traffic? No. But what it does mean is that God is with you and that God will take care of you. That's what God wants. Stand with me all over the house. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you that you may not want us happy, your, your, your highest priority may not be our happiness, but Lord, your highest priority is that we are yours and that we love you with everything that we are. And Lord, that, that you want us to live the blessed life, which means more than happiness, more than anything else. It means that we walk with you. Lord, help us to realize that. Help us to, to have that thought with us from today forward. And Lord, we thank you for this day that you've given us. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen.